Hello, everybody. So I'm in Switzerland at the moment, and I was talking yesterday to a guy on the street, an Iranian guy, who talked to me about, uh, he wanted me to join his association uh, to help Iranians. And I thought this is, a, uh, is maybe the right time to talk about what's happening in Iran. The person I spoke to, he is clearly a very kind and very good-hearted person, and he obviously worries uh, and hates very much the human rights situation in Iran. And the human rights situation is bad. There are being people, there are people being killed for simply criticizing the, uh, the regime of Ayatollah Khomeini and the, the state and so on. And it is, abs it, it is a horrible, it is a bad human rights situation. The problem was that on his pamphlet that he showed me, one of the international supporters of his cause was, uh, the, there was a picture of John Bolton, the walrus. And you know, the difference between John Bolton and between Adolf Hitler is really just the size of their mustache. John Bolton would, without blinking, immediately kill a million people in Iran. The, John Bolton is one of the people who would do the worst of the worst to the people of Iran if he could. If he could, the neocons, to drop nuclear bombs on Iran, he would. That's the man. So, um, although the person I spoke to yesterday on the, on the street is definitely a good and kind-hearted person and definitely wants to change the human rights situation. What we see time and again is how neocons and neocon-sponsored outfits like the uh, uh, endowment for uh, the, the, the National Endowment for Democracy and so on, how they then use these good people and these, and, and these people who want serious, genuine, um, democratic change in their home countries for their purposes and try to use this to destabilize their own, uh, this, these perceived enemies, right? <clears throat> now, the, uh, the issue at the moment for Iran goes much further though. I mean, I, the, the guy yesterday, he, he, he said the, the regime will fall, the regime will fall soon because a majority of Iranians hate the regime. And actually I have other, other, other sources, Iranian sources who tell me, who also tell me that they're deeply, deeply uh, unhappy with the with the domestic politics of, of the current uh, government and regime. But on the other hand, you know, we have this, <laughs> Iran has now an, a huge international problem. And the, we've, for two weeks now, we've basically been waiting and biting our, uh, our nails about Iran's reta retaliatory strike for Israel uh, killing the chief negotiator of, of the, the Palestinians of Hamas in uh, in Tehran. Um, we, I mean, you all know what I'm, you all know what I'm talking about. That, that two weeks ago, uh, during the right after the inauguration of the new president of uh, Iran, the uh, Hamas kind uh, uh, killed with a projectile. That's what we know so far with a projectile. The, uh, the 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 leader of the negotiating team of of, of Hamas, and you know Israel at that point already had attacked uh, the out, uh, parts of Hezbollah in Beirut, and they've made a habit out of striking right into the capital cities of, uh, of neighboring countries. I mean, Iran is not even a directly neighboring country, but of countries in the, in the region, and with impunity, <laughs> with utter impunity, um, blow up airfields in Syria, kill people in... Um, in Lebanon, in uh, in Beirut, kill people now in Tehran, and just with just with absolute, with with the air of being allowed to do so, of having the right to do so, this so-called right to self-defense for Israel stretches right into the hearts of uh, of other countries, and gives them apparently the right to kill anyone they see fit, and Iran has a amazing track record of, of, um, uh, of de-escalating moments when any other country would probably have gone to war. But Iran, because they know how po extremely powerful, not just Israel, but its godfather, the United States is, um, had to de-escalate. And I remind you that in 2019, in the early days of January, Donald Trump took the decision to kill the uh, top general, um, uh, of the Iranians, Mr. Soleimani, uh, when he visited Baghdad, again, an attack on 
somebody in another country's uh, uh, capital city. And then the Iranians decided to basically fire back rockets at, uh, at US uh, military bases, but made sure that they wouldn't really hit their targets and that nobody would die. Uh, it was ingenious. Then uh, in April this year, the, after the, uh, the Israelis blew up the, uh, the part of the consulate of the Iranians in Damascus, in Syria, uh, a huge breach of international law. Huge breach. I mean, absolute, absolutely terrible. They, um, the, the Iranians again managed to uh, de-escalate by coordinating with the Americans a, a, a targeted strike against uh, Israel in which they fired rockets but made sure that, uh, that um, almost nobody came to harm with the exception of a very, very unfortunate uh, 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 young Druze girl. Um, but apart from that, it was fine. And the United States, they made sure that, 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 uh, that Israel actually didn't, didn't strike back again, which, is a, which probably was already a huge success because the problem at this point is not Iran. The problem, is, the problem really is Israel and this, uh, this sense of impunity that this country has to, be, to have the right that they, that they proclaim to strike at anyone, anywhere, anytime. And this creates this, a very special problem for Iran. It creates this impossible problem in which if they strike back, they need to strike in a way that it, re, um, that it re-establishes um, uh, the, the uh, escalation dominance, that, the, that the, the, they need to strike back forcefully enough in order for Israel to fear them and to stop these, um, these, these attacks on Iranian soil. So last time they did this in April, I thought they really established the point that they can hit any place in Israel anytime they want, that Israel should be actually scared of the Iranians. And I think uh, Mirshami and others also thought so. But turns out that the, the Israelis want to get a real strike. The, um, the current government of Israel with, with, um, with Netanyahu and the others, they would actually like to be, to, to be struck properly and have a couple of people really die and like important infrastructure taken out in order to faint outrage and to drag the United States into a complete and all out war against Iran, which will of course be fought first and foremost through US, through US weapons with US troops and with the entire, with the entire um, arsenal that the United States has. That's the goal at the moment. And um, nobody wins more of a war than Netanyahu. So he wants this. And the fact that Israel has proven that it can hit anything in, inside Israel actually helps him to get to that point. So they now keep assassinating and keep breaching international law at, an, at a massive pace. Because like, if there is one more principle of international law, one more norm that should not be broken in diplomacy, it's do not kill diplomats. Diplomats are off limits. And if you have a chief negotiator, then that person, whether he has actual diplomatic status or not, is, of, is obviously the missionary of the other side and they cannot be touched and by killing them. It's just, um, you know, it's just another one of these moments of um, utter ridiculous um, uh, uh, warmongering, absolute warmongering, killing of the peace process on all fronts. But um, even beyond that one, uh, what the situation now is for the Iranians is that if they do not strike back forcefully, what this establishes is that Israel can kill anyone, everywhere, anytime, in Tehran, wherever it be. And who's going to be next? That's what the people in Iran, that's what the leadership in Iran is going to ask itself. Is it going to be the prime minister? I mean, the last one already died, but apparently from everything we know, that was a legitimate, normal unfortunate accident and very, very bad weather, horrible weather in, um, in, uh, uh, on, a on a flight back. So probably that was not a targeted uh, killing, although we don't know if it was. And if the Iranians keep that secret, that would be another moment of, um, of, of Iran, Iran's de-escalation with the rest. But if it wasn't, or in, if, the, if the issue is even now that they do not strike back after this assassination of, of the Ham Hamas leader in in Tehran, then the, the, uh, Israel will continue, and they will, this, this, without doubt. Um, because again, Netanyahu wants this war, and the, these targeted assassinations have, are, have, have been done habitually, you know. Um, Israelis has, have also been killing uh, Iranian scientists in Iran. 
um, over and over again, right? These, these assassinations are nothing new. That, and that's a, that's a real problem for the Iranians. Um, so the choice for Iran is do nothing and have more of your leaders uh, uh, attacked and blown up. Maybe at some point even uh, Khomeini, right? The, the, the supreme leader. Nobody's going to be safe. Or strike back and risk an all-out war with the United States. And this gamble, I don't know how the Iranians will do it. They have been brilliant with finding middle ground in establishing their military dominance in the region without actually causing that all-out war, which, make no mistake, a war between the United States, Israel, and Iran would kill way above a million people. Way above that. It's, it's, it would be an absolute horrible catastrophe. And it, in my view, must be averted at all and any costs. But I do understand that the Iranians are now in an absolutely impossible position. Um, I don't know how they get out of it, but they are under pressure to do something. The fact that they took already two weeks to reply and didn't and take the time might indicate that either they, uh, they are gathering their forces in order to strike extremely strongly and get things in place. It might indicate that they are playing with the nerves of the US and the Israelis. It might indicate both. Um, but that something is going to happen in West Asia, and that is probably going to be bad, is at this point pretty, pretty obvious. Because if they don't, if the Iranians don't do anything, they will be targeted again and again and again. And they need, they need to find a way to stop that. Um, diplomacy seems not to work, at least not with, not, not with Israel maybe with the United States, but the problem at this point is that we don't know who's running the United States. We know that there's an elite, that there's an elite, that there's a clique, um, but who really could rein in um, Israel's power over the US, we don't know. And maybe, probably there isn't. I mean, we've seen the, the images from Capitol Hill the other day, uh, the standing ovations, although not everybody was present, about 100, 120 uh, lawmakers were absent, but still, this is, um, you know this influence that that Netanyahu has over the United, over the over the U.S. and the way that he's able to play this game is absolutely frightening. So the 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 the, the task for the Israel for the Iranians to re-establish deterrence and re-establish a balance that would protect the peace between Israel and Iran without the Iranians having to fear uh, strikes every single day. Um, from the other side is um, it's a daunting task. I wouldn't know how, no idea, no idea how to do it. So that's my that's my video update for on this uh, uh, Wednesday morning. I think it's I think it's August 14. Um, I see you soon. Bye.